Hello everybody, Bruno here from Light Band Museum of Photography and I'm coming to you from the hills of Perth in Western Australia. The other day I went to visit a friend and we went for a walk uh, in a bush area around this place and I saw this piece of wood resting on a rock in a semi-quarry looking kind of environment. So I said, hey, I would like to make an exposure of that uh, piece of wood on a rock and uh, this is what I'm going to do now. So let's go see what we can make. All right, so I am on location right now, and uh, since I'm wearing just loafers and stuff, I need to put on some bush walking shoes so I can get out. As you can see, we are here in a bushy area where the rocks or the quarry is somewhere down there. So I think that will do. Get that right here. So let's rock and roll. Yeah, so this area here is a natural reserve and uh, a lot of the resident uh, horse fanatics. So people go for a ride here all the time. And then right now, we are in uh, Autumn Fall, however you want to call it and the leaves are changing colors and stuff and uh, even though we are here in the bush but the bush is changing colors as well even though they might not be those big maple tree like or the the london plain you know type of trees here in australia but still we have a lot of colors in the, in the surrounding all right, so we are almost close to our destination. As you can see, got rocks everywhere. So I wonder if this used to be a quarry or not. But uh, where we're going seems to be. So let's walk down there and figure it out. Look at all of these colors. Just few, whoa. I had a pigeon sitting right behind me, just right here, and I didn't see. <clears throat> yeah, so all of this was relatively brown just three weeks ago. And uh, the rain came, and all of a sudden they started changing, you know, colors. This is how this place looked like when we came here for a walk, that brown. And just in a matter of days, started changing colors, you know, getting these kind of, uh, you know, greenery. And here we got some of the Zenturia, called grass trees, a few of them around. Ah, here is one of the resident. He's a big one. Man, that's one of the big kangaroos I've seen in a long time. He's just, just a big kangaroo just right there. Let's see if I can make a move so you can have a look. There he goes. Look at him. Twing, 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 twing. There we go. All right, so this is where I'm coming to. And it looks like a quarry. And I'm quite sure it used to be a quarry here because I could just see some mark of uh, rock splitting here and uh, I don't know if you can see that piece of wood right there there's a piece of wood right there on that rock this is what I came to photograph and it looks like I may have to wait for a little bit longer after I set up the shot because uh, uh, the light and shadows aren't exactly what I want at this present time and I could have come maybe a little bit too early for it or maybe too late but I'm gonna set up 
and sit around and see what happens unless if uh, the rain comes down okay let's do that so because i'm not ready for this shot obviously there's got to be uh, something here that i can actually make an exposure of and i'm gonna set up the camera and just explore and see what what i can find while i wait for the sun to move around all right so right now i find a composition it's gonna be these rocks in line here so i'm gonna have that uh, compose something relatively diagonal with the wall here you know framing uh the top left hand, hand corner and right now i feel like i'm screwed a little bit because we got a little bit of rain clouds just hanging around and uh, they're coming they're coming this way as well so i hope that they pass very quickly without dropping any water on me <laughs> but if uh, it started pouring down i'm screwed relatively but i'm gonna try to set up anyway i don't have any shelter here but uh, set up and see what happens so before i do anything else i'm just gonna set up uh, you know the camera i'm gonna level up everything and see if i can use a little bit of uh, camera movement to get my composition and if not i'm gonna drop my tripod down a little bit and have another look before i start it declining up oh. yeah so i try to go level up first and see what i can do with the composition before i can oh i didn't lock this baby in so it moved I have to go back all right so let's lock this baby in properly there we go ah, you're gonna drop this baby all right so obviously the drop didn't get into composition so do a little bit of base incline here and now I'm gonna use a little bit of painting movement here like so all right so this is gonna be a very very interesting composition because I got uh, the rocks going diagonally but yet I got some rocks in the back and there's some rocks here in the front as well. And then the rocks in the water. And I want everything to be tack sharp. So I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Because of that, I'm gonna do a little bit of focusing to far and near and see what my bellows movements are. And go from there, all right? So six millimeters of bellows movement with this lens, I can do it. But I'm gonna try to lay that plane of focus down and then do my, my near and far and see. So I am already on my far. All right, so now that I got uh, my new plane of focus, I need to find my new, my bellows movements with my new near and new far all right just like i was uh fearing got a little bit of drizzle coming and uh but i'm gonna make the exposure anyway and pack up and then wait for the other one after laying my plane of focus I determine where my focus should be now i get only uh, three millimeters of uh, bellows movement and that would afford me about f16 at the minimum to get this whole uh thing in focus but i'm gonna push up f32 just because of my bad eyes so i'm gonna be shooting uh, ill for hp5 and i rated this at uh, iso 200 All right, so we're gonna do ambient. 
Since I already determined my aperture, I just need to get, you know, my shutter speed, which is one fifth of a second. So we're gonna shoot that at a quarter of a second at f29. All right, sweet. The sun is out as I like it, which is great, but I wish that something was on this side casting a shadow over here to completely give this a full canvas of dark gray with this actually being onto the dark gray. But unfortunately, I cannot stage that. So I'm gonna go with this anyway. And I think it's not bad, you know, having uh, the light gray over here, the dark gray, and uh, with the piece of wood in, in the middle. All right, so now that I got a little bit of uh, sun coming, so I'm gonna mirror this using the spot meter. Okay, and uh, by doing that, I'm gonna use this as my mid tone. So, lock this in as mid tone, and I'm gonna use that as my shadow right in there. 1.3 seconds and for my highlight instead of using these bright areas here that's reading one tenth and over here there's a shiny bit on this wood here it's reading one twentieth of a second so I'm gonna go with the one twentieth nah it's on this side we won't be able to see it in the print anyway so for that reason I'm gonna go with this one Okay, so I'm gonna try to find the brightest, which is this one, 113th. But unfortunately, where I read as my darker tone is falling beyond my dy dynamic range of uh, my fab stuff that I'm working with. And, but I got about a stop and a half onto my highlight, between the highlights and my mid-tone. So I'm gonna move my mid-tone to the right to move my shadows to where I can see more detail. All right, so I'm gonna call that the mid-tone one fifth of a second so it's gonna now be half a second and uh, I got everything where I need it to be all right so we got a half a second set sweet All right, so here is a photo and I really, really like what happened here. And I nail focus way much better than what I was thinking. Looking at it this way as well, you can see, you know, all of the rocks on the water, you know, very, very well detailed and so on. And exposure was there. I don't know what that is. It could just be a piece of dust on my film here. And uh, yeah, and the one thing that I did notice is actually those lines, you know, by the rocks right there, you know, so water lines on the rock i really really like those as well what else can i say not being a seasoned landscape photographer one thing that i could have done in retrospect was actually a little bit of the reflections on uh, uh on the water here i could cut that down using a little bit of polarizer you know circular po polarizer but i think this is actually even way much better because now it's uh uh, the opposite of the dry here. We got the dry ground and the wet ground at the same time and then that's really really nice And then these rocks right here, especially with the white tops, you know kind of delineate You know the triangle or the half a screen diagonally going that way To be wet part and here to be the dry part and uh, some of the things that I didn't really think about it at the time But at least the triangle that was visual and I wanted to do that hence the reason of uh, uh, this composition all right, so I'm very happy with this and uh, let me know what you think. 
this image here turned out just as pre-visualized at the time and everything that I've done here just came out just fine. The only thing that I wish for this image to improve it is actually to make this piece of wood lighter than what it is. Other than that, you know, I lacked everything. I had a plane of focus that was laying from here going up that way and then coming down as well. So what I've done here, I used both camera movements, tilt and swing to be able to get everything from down here to the far right corner and everything from here to the top right corner as well. So what else can I say? All right, so I hope that you enjoyed this little escapade with me here. And uh, it's a shot that I've been meaning to make for some time now because I came over here, as I said before. And uh, so I finally got to do it in a very, very extreme conditions because uh, it's cold, it's windy, and uh, the rain is uh, very, very menacing and so forth. But I managed to, to do it. And I, not only that, I got a little composition that wasn't part of this, the, the, the journey today. And let me know what you think. For a portrait photographer getting to landscape, I am loving it and I'm learning so much as well and uh, but eventually I'm gonna take this more into a dedicated environment which is the studio and they do more portraits and so on, and share that with you as well so until then I'd like to know what you think and put it down into the comments if there's any way that you can help me learn this thing here to be better at it by all means suggest resources books videos whatever by all means you know share it and uh, I would like to continue this journey further and I would like to come along with me as well. So if you want to come along with me, you know what to do. But until then, cheers.